Autoimmune hepatitis, as the name suggests, is when the body's own immune cells attack the liver cells, resulting in inflammation. The disease may be asymptomatic, meaning no symptoms initially, or can start as acute hepatitis and progress to chronic liver disease and even liver cirrhosis, which is scarring of the liver. Autoimmune hepatitis is four times more common in women than in men. It can occur at any age. Let's learn a bit more about how the disease process starts. Well, the precise cause of autoimmune hepatitis is not known, but there are a few theories that exist. The first is what's called molecular mimicry. Some people's immune system may mistakenly target proteins in their own liver cells. The liver cells are known as hepatocytes. Now, this can happen because these proteins on the liver resemble proteins found in other microorganisms, such as a virus. For example, hepatitis C virus. The immune cell is meant to attack the hepatitis C virus, but mistakens the liver cells as hepatitis C virus due to the similar protein structure between the liver cells and the hepatitis C virus. And this will result in inflammation of the liver caused by the immune cells. The second theory for autoimmune hepatitis is what's called immune activation upon self-antigen presentation. So basically what happens here is that the body's own liver proteins are being presented by these specialized antigen presenting cells. These cells present the liver proteins to what's called CD4 T helper cells. And then this cell will trigger an immune response that leads to liver damage, causing autoimmune hepatitis. The final big theory is what's called loss of self-tolerance. And normally, everyone has some immune cells that target their own tissues. There are usually mechanisms in place to prevent these cells from causing harm. And the specific cell here is the T regulatory cell. Now, when this mechanism falls, when we have no regulation, it can contribute to the development of autoimmune diseases, such as autoimmune hepatitis. And so autoimmune hepatitis can have a range or a variety of presentation. Typically, people can present with asymptomatic elevation of deranged liver function tests, the transaminases, specifically AST and ALT levels. They can have some fatigue and weight loss, or they could present with acute hepatitis, where someone can be jaundiced and develop right upper quadrant pain. Rarely, someone will present with acute liver failure. Autoimmune hepatitis is associated with other autoimmune conditions. So many people may already have an underlying autoimmune condition, such as autoimmune thyroiditis, which is the most common association, rheumatoid arthritis, type 1 diabetes mellitus, ulcerative colitis, celiac disease, and systemic lupus erythematosus. Investigations of people with autoimmune hepatitis will typically show elevated AST and ALT levels. They have also high immunoglobulin G, IgG levels, with typically normal immunoglobulin A and immunoglobulin M. Most importantly, people who have autoimmune hepatitis have presence of autoantibodies. People with autoimmune hepatitis are divided based on these autoantibodies, typically. And there are two main types. So firstly is type 1 autoimmune hepatitis, which is responsible for over 90% of cases. You have the classic autoantibodies here. Anti-nuclear antibodies, ANA, 
anti-smooth muscle antibodies, ASMA, anti-actin antibodies, AAA, and then you have type 2 autoimmune hepatitis, which mainly affects children and is generally more severe form of the disease. Here, autoantibodies can be found um, that are against liver kidney microsomes, ALKM1, alone or accompanied by liver cytosol antigen, ALC1. The other investigation to be performed is a liver biopsy, and a liver biopsy is necessary to establish a diagnosis of autoimmune hepatitis. Now, the histological change in a normal liver looks something like this, with presence of the portal triad, the central vein, and the hepatocytes. However, with autoimmune hepatitis, what you see is dense mononuclear and plasma cell infiltration of the portal areas which expands to the liver lobules, leading to damage of the hepatocytes at its periphery with erosion of really the ends of um, uh, this area. And this is termed interface hepatitis. However, there is no single histological feature that is pathognomonic for autoimmune hepatitis. Then you can have imaging of the liver, but really, there are no characteristic imaging features that can help diagnose autoimmune hepatitis, possibly an ultrasound that can show some inflammation. The diagnosis of autoimmune hepatitis, therefore, is based on a criteria and include a number of things. Firstly, they need elevation of the liver function test, specifically AST and or ALT. They must have positive autoantibodies, elevated IgG, exclusion of other diagnoses and differentials such as Wilson's disease, viral hepatitis, or drug-induced liver disease. And, you know, a liver biopsy can help, which can show inflammation and some of the characteristic features we discussed earlier. Once autoimmune hepatitis is diagnosed, treatment should be started, and there is often a dramatic response. Treatment includes prednisone and azathioprine for most patients. Prednisone monotherapy is less preferable due to side effects. Azathioprine also requires monitoring due to cytopenias. Other treatment options include other immunosuppressive agents, such as mercaptopurine or mycophenolate. Histological response can lag by many months, and the duration of treatment should be two to three years at least, before considering withdrawing treatment. A liver biopsy is also recommended to determine the histological change to the treatment before considering stopping the treatment. Finally, a liver transplantation is also considered in people who have more aggressive disease, especially if they have no response to the treatment uh, for, the, for a few years. So in summary, autoimmune hepatitis is a rare liver disease caused by the immune system mistakenly attacking the liver cells, the hepatocytes. It is characterized by the presence of certain autoantibodies in the blood, increased levels of uh, immunoglobulin G, and specific changes in the liver tissue on biopsy. It is believed that the disease occurs when the body's immune system loses its ability to recognize liver cells as friendly and starts attacking them. Treatment is with steroids and or as a thioprin, which is effective. Thank you for watching.